Hi there, I'm Dawn. As you probably know, I am one part of the Disney Grown Ups. Gary, unfortunately, is at work. So I thought I would come on here today to show you how I make my candy cane ears. Now, I did have a pair, which I gave away last Christmas to a young lady who watched our videos. Um, and I've been meaning to make myself another pair. I haven't got around to it. Um, I was hoping in June, when we were supposed to go back to Walt Disney World, um, I was going to buy lots of the clay in America because it's easy to get hold of and over here it's not so easy um, but obviously that didn't happen so I've had a bit of trouble sourcing what I needed but I thought I would show you what to do um, it's going to be filmed over several days because the clay is an air dry clay and it takes a while to dry out completely and do so if I change what I'm wearing if I change the angles and whatever that is why because obviously I'm going to be doing this over a few days so let's get started first thing you're going to need well, there's several things you're going to need you need a pair of ears so that you can actually have these as a template to draw around um, you need this stuff and this is called model magic clay Crayola and it's a soft foamy kind of um, style air dry clay so I have red and white here um, I've got a tub here which I purchased a long time ago and I've got all different colors in here but I haven't got much red left which is why I had to buy some more uh, which is one of the reasons I've been waiting to actually do this um, I made the candy cane ones which were uh, like lollipops with all the different colours and I did the ones which were red, white and green for Christmas. Um, I'm not sure whether to just make a red and white pair of candy cane or to make the red, white and green. This stuff is really good at actually blending and mixing together to make other colours so it's very easy um, if you wanted to make you know, other colours. So if you put the blue and the yellow together they, they mould together really quickly and easily to make the green. Um, the other thing I've got is this, and this is the glaze. Now this helps to make them shiny and also helps to waterproof them, not waterproof, but weatherproof, that's what I mean to say, uh, a little bit and keep them a little bit sturdier. Um, these things you can pick up on Amazon. You sometimes wait a while to get them because I, you know, I think they, they're shipped in basically. Um, but yeah, so they are the Model Magic Clay and Glaze. Um, headband. Now for these ones the plastic headbands are the best. I mean obviously when I make my um, other ears I make them with uh, material and everything but these are plastic headbands which are the best to use for that. You will need a trusty old glue gun and I have a mat, heat mat and obviously some glue sticks. Um, a separate Piece of well this is actually tablecloth we've got a wipe down tablecloth and this is actually an extra piece that got left over um, because this stuff can sometimes stain surfaces so just be aware of that and make sure we've got something to work on um, something that's non-stick would be good as well um, you need to make a bow so I've got two bits here of choice um, felt is usually best because it makes a nice sturdy bow so I've got some sparkly green felt here and I've also got some shiny thick felt which I'm not sure it's metallic foil felt which I'm not sure which one I'm going to use there um, pen or pencil scissors ruler and I think that's about it so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw around my ears to make a template um, I just want a rough idea of the size of the ears and this just gives you a guide as to how big they're going to be. So I've just done a quick sketch like that and I will just roughly work out what size I need them to be. It's just really for something to, to give me a guide. I'll keep this to one side because I will use it for the positioning later. And then what you need to do, you need to decide what colours you're going to do. This is very stretchy, sort of squidgy, but it's foamy. It's quite, 
It's quite resistant when you, you squeeze it, but sorry about all the noise. Doesn't want to come out of the packet. Right, so the first thing you need to do is you need to make yourself a nice thick log of white, because white will be your base colour. So you need to give this a bit of a knead just to, to get it going. You need your clay until you've got it nice and supple. And then you make like a fat sort of log. Um, so it's all guesstimate. I, I, I haven't got an exact science for this. Um, what you do need to do though is kind of measure the circumference if you can. So I'm going to put a little mark in there and go one, two, three. So mine is about four inches wide, um, which for you metric people is 10 centimetres, I believe. I'm an old person, so I'm still working inches. So that's about right. So now what I need to do, is I need to get the red. And again, squish it up, give it a little bit of a knead to make sure it's all pliable and worked in. And what you're going to do is you are going to make, take little bits of it and make like long rectangles. About the same length as your log that you have made. So they end up being about that big. As I said, I hope you can see that on the camera, but it's not an exact science. Then in between that, you put a very thin layer of white. I think I'm going to put some green in as well. I think that's the way to go. So I roll this out and then you stick that to the white. So you're starting to get Thing like that. Right, I found some green that I used before. So, as you can see, that was the leftover from last time. Not sure what I'm going to do with that. Um, but basically, so I've got my red, then my white. So now I'm going to do the same again with this green. I'm going to just pull bits. It's very pliable, it's very forgiving. Um, so I'm just going to keep going until I have got. Some more of that, and then another layer of white in between each one. You always put a little layer of white. And the idea is, is that you build this up until it's the same size as the circumference of your larger roll. So then you get your large piece, and I'm hoping you can see this. I'm, I'm trying to move the camera. I'm not very good with this tripod, it's uh, a bit unsteady. Um, let me try and see if I can. There we go. Is that a bit better? Hopefully, you can see now. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my large piece in the middle and I'm going to start rolling until I get them to meet up. So I think that that red is slightly too wide. So I'm going to just take a little bit of that and push it backwards. Push my green in a bit and just get it to meet there like that. So now I've got a kind of, it's not very even, it's not very neat, but I don't think it really matters. So now what you need to do is just roll it out a little bit to try and make it a bit flatter and this is the basis of what you're doing now you're now starting it's like making seaside rock you're now starting to roll and pull out so move all my bits to one side so what I will do is I will cut off the rough end 
each side like so save those bits because I might be able to do something with them after and then all you do is you just keep rolling out until it becomes a long thin sausage and you just keep going and going and going Right, so now I want to take my template and lay it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to twist this to give me the candy cane pattern. And I'm going to lay it on my template, which I hope you can see. I really haven't set this camera up very well and I do apologize for that. But basically I'm twisting I'm twisting as I go and I'm swirling so that it just turns in to a candy cane kind of swirl. And I'm just using a template so that I can see how large I need it to be. As I say, these are not a, an exact science and each ear will end up looking slightly different because of the way that you swirl the, the pattern. So I think I'm going to cut that off about there. And just keep twisting and pulling it round. And I think that that it's just about right. And so that's what I've ended up with. Okay. Now I'm going to, where the little seam bit is at the bottom, I'm going to get my template and I'm going to get my ears. And what you need to do is you need to push them against the edge of the headband so that it kind of shapes them a little bit it's as i say it's quite a forgiving clay now that feels quite flimsy and floppy at the moment but we're just gonna make sure i get the sort of shape that i want and squash it on a bit and then those will be left to dry and now i'll start the other one I'm just going to push this one as well against the headband just to make sure that I've got the right shape. I'm going to go ahead and carry on and make the other two um, just because I've got the spare clay. Now you might find when you do four that Actually, the two you did originally don't go together as well. In fact, I think these two go together better, which is one from my first pair and one from my second. So just give it a good old shove against the headband and they now need to be left for 24 hours to dry. Now it actually takes three days for this clay to dry out completely, but after 24 hours, it's still slightly pliable. So that's the best time to then glue it onto your headband 
um, for the best results. But as I say, these now need to go away. They need to be left out. I'm going to put them on a tray and they will be left to dry for 24 hours. So I will come back tomorrow and do part two for you. Hello, so we're back. We've left our ears to dry. It's been just over 24 hours actually. Um, didn't get a chance to do anything with them yesterday. They're still very flexible um, and they still feel very squidgy, um, but there we go. So what I've done is I've cut out, I've got this very shiny um, felt, but it's actually like really thick. It's actually a lot thicker than I thought. It's like a metallic um, felt backed material. So it's quite thick. So I wasn't quite sure what I'm gonna do with that. Or I've got the green sparkly, but I've decided to go with this and give this a go because I thought it looked quite festive. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I've, I've, I'll measure this out for you. For I looked at these ears and the bow's quite big on these. Um, so I've sort of gauged it roughly. Um, so I looked at this and what I've done is I've cut 24 centimetres in width and nine centimetres in depth. But it's entirely up to you how you feel you want to um, do them. I haven't cut it very even just looking at it. So what you need to do is you need to find the centre is the first thing. So just find the centre there and then you're going to fold your ears in like this, your bow rather, in like this. And then what you're going to do is hot glue gum down this seam to hold it in place. So I have my trusty hot glue gum that's been heating up here. Let me just find that centre again, just to make sure. Right, and so I'm just going to put a line of hot glue down there. And I haven't protected the table, but I've got my little mat down here. And a line of hot glue on that side as well and oops, try not to burn your fingers and to pinch that down in place. So there we go. So you've got, got that. Right, so once you've got that, what you need to do is you need to pinch to make into a bow. Now this is really stiff and hard actually um, because it's quite thick. I don't know whether this is really going to work very well, which is why I thought I'd give it a go just to see. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's struggling to get into a bow. Um, but normally what you would do is pinch there and there. I suppose it doesn't look too bad, but we'll, we'll give it a go. And then what you need to do is glue in the middle and pinch it tight. And then what you do is turn it over and on the back where you've got your other two little creases, you pinch in there as well. So I will just sit and hold that for a minute to get that to hopefully fix together. But well, I wouldn't advise using this uh, thick metallic foam for a bow unless you do it single. I think maybe single would have been better, but then obviously if you did it single, then the back is going to be the inside color. So I'm not sure this was the right way to go for bow material. It's, uh, it's struggling to come open. Right, what you need to do then is you need to just cut yourself a long strip, I'm just eyeballing this and doing it freehand, a long strip to go through the middle. And what you need it to be is to wrap around your bow and just overlap a tiny bit so that you can actually put that around the back. So I shall snip that one off there and I shall glue gun that in place. Right, so there we have our finished bow. So, headband. We need to mark off where we think the ears need to sit. So I'm just using a pen here. So I'm going to want them about there and about there, just to give me a guide of where my ears are going to sit. 
then I, I've got, as I said, I've got six out of the clay that I did yesterday or the day before. Um, I'm trying to match up which ones I think look best together. I think those two are pretty much even size. I think they look pretty similar. Or I've got this one, I'm not sure. No, nope, I think I'm gonna go with these two. I think these two are the ones that I'm going to do. So I'm just going to offer them up to my ears again. Sit them slightly further back so that you've got room to put your bow. Don't sit them right near the front. You need to sit them slightly further back um, so that they actually will fit. And then that one will be there. So I'm going to go ahead and start to glue those on. So a lot of um, hot glue, make sure it's nice and hot, all on the bottom of your ears. Choose your place and press. Now, because these aren't completely set, they should be a little bit forgiving still, and they should, you should be able to mold them a little bit still if they're not quite the right shape. <clears throat> So we'll hold those on, press those on. And hopefully that will do the trick. And then the other ear. All right, and there we have our glued ears. Now to keep these looking shiny and nice, as I said before, I have, you can see here I've got the Model Magic Glaze, which I've got an old ice cream lid, <clears throat> old ice cream tub lid, and I'm going to pour it in. It looks very milky when you pour it out, but it actually um, dries really clear. And what I'm going to do is just paint this on to my ears and they will look thick and milky for a while. Try and get into all the grooves. And obviously this is something that is going to take a while to do because um, you're gonna to have to let this dry before you can do the other side. They should harden off. They never get completely hard. They never go completely solid. Um, the longer you leave them, the better. And ideally, I should have left these a lot longer before I started to glaze them, to be honest. I should have left them the 24 hours I should have glued them on. And then I should have left them really the full 72 hours before I then started to glaze. But it's nearly Christmas and I need the space and I'm getting impatient. So I'm doing a rush job. I've got enough clay now that I can uh, make some more should these become a disaster for some reason. They are quite fragile for a while, so you have to treat them with care for a little bit. Um, and obviously when you take them to the parks or wherever, you've got to be careful how you pack them. Um, and I must confess, that's why I first got one of the ear hangers um, to go off my rucksack, which I've now been making. And hopefully, in the new year, I'm going to open an Etsy shop um, and I'm going to put my ears, um, my ear holders and hangers, <coughs> wall hangers and everything on there because I do find that crafting is very therapeutic and making things just makes you feel good. And I think at the moment, we could all do with things that make us feel good. So, there. Right, so that's both ears done on one side. They will have to wait. I will have to leave them until they're dry. I think you can see, they're starting to get that nice gleam um, and shine. 
obviously I've now got my bow which will be ready to be stuck on there as and when. Um, so we'll come back when all this is dried I will do the other side I won't bother showing you that because I'm you know you don't need to see me painting the other side um, but basically once that's set a few hours before that's going to be set um, I will turn them over I will paint the other side and then I will glue on the bow so I'll catch you next time when I'm doing that bit right so we're back everything's dried and stuck to the thing I've, I've glazed both sides of the lollies or the candy canes so they're both sides of those are now glazed I made the red bow which I wasn't overly happy with um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to use that one or not so I made because I've got some extra ears anyway um, I made some green sparkly felt ones out of the same way of doing it with the piece of material really you can eyeball this as to what sort of size you want for the bow um you know there isn't a definite measurement just decide how big or small i mean compared to the disney ears this bow is pretty small but i didn't really want one much bigger on these because i think too big and it sort of takes away from it so what i'm going to do is i will stick my bow on now, as I say, there's the green one or this will be the red one. I can't decide which one. What do you think? I think I'm going to go with the green. I think it balances with the red headband and the green. I think, yeah, I think I'm going to go with the green. I've got my trusty glue gun heating up. Um, I'm going to use my tray because I don't want to get it all over the tablecloth um, I glazed all my other spare ears as well so that I've got those to make some more ears the thing is with these is they're not perfect and they don't match necessarily because you're making them freehand um, they're never going to be identical so for example I've got these two and I mean other than the size one is slightly bigger than the other but the patterns are completely different these two are my nearest match but again completely different but I think that's part of the attraction of them um, so trusty glue gun heated up and ready and what I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue on the front here to stick my bow to and press down I'll give that just a couple of seconds and then I'm going to be gluing a little bit around the back as well just to squeeze it down and hopefully that will stick if you want to finish these off, you can put little gems around here or perhaps some beading of some kind or some ribbon. At the moment, I'm going to leave these plain. And then what I'm going to do is just behind each little edge of the bow, I'm going to glue them on to the actual uh, ear shape as well, just for an extra bit of stability. So I know you can't really can't really see that, but I'm not very good with this tripod. It keeps collapsing on me. Um, yeah, so I've just glued behind there. Just want to make sure that that one's not stuck down as well. And then I'm just going to put a little bit here as well to stick that one. And it just helps to secure them a little bit more. And just make sure that that's fluffed up a bit to excuse Pablo if you can hear him barking in the background and there we go get rid of all my little ends of glue and there we have the candy cane ears now if I go like that and I will show you hopefully the glue's set enough that I can put them on don't get them stuck to my head but there we go my candy cane ears oh, I'm pretty pleased with them they've come out okay so I'm hoping 
But that has given you an idea of something to do to while away the hours. Um, I had intended to make these earlier in the year, but never got round to it, but I'm glad I've done them now. Um, and they're all set and ready for Christmas. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. If there's any other Disney crafts that you'd like me to have a go at, or if there's any other sort of things that you want to know, then, then, then let me know um, and I'll see what I can do. I do enjoy crafting. I'm not brilliant at it, but I do my best. Um, but I find it very therapeutic and I find it, especially in these strange old times we're living in at the moment, it's quite nice because it is a distraction for your mind. It's something to take your mind off all the troubles of the world and for you to focus on. So I would recommend doing a bit of crafting. Hope you have a go at making some candy cane ears and um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, press the notification bell because as you know, we're very random. We upload as and when. Um, and if you're not already subscribed and you think you'd like to, then go ahead and, and press that as well. Um, but whichever, we're happy just to have you here and to be part of this Disney family. So thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, everybody. Be kind to each other. Look after each other. And we'll see you soon. Bye.